When I joined Amadeus a few years ago, one of my first projects was to build a demo application using some of the flight booking APIs that we have in order to build a flight booking web app. And at that moment, I asked my manager what technologies I should use for the app. And he said, don't worry, use any technologies that you feel comfortable with. The important thing is to be able to use the APIs properly and build a nice app. So I thought that, OK, it's not going to be really complicated. However, my excitement didn't last for long. Even though I was able to get access to the Open API specification of each of the APIs, I had a lot of doubts about which APIs I should use for my use case. That's why I got in touch with Gael to ask for help. Gael has always been an expert in our APIs, so I asked a few questions about which APIs I should use for my application. At first, I was really happy to be able to share all the insights I have about my products to the customer team. But rapidly, I grew concerned. I grew concerned about the experience that I was delivering to my uh, customer. In the end, if my customer team asks that many questions, then what is my customer understanding of the product? To give you a bit of context, uh, we are working for Amadeus. Amadeus is the leading technology provider in the travel industry. And within Amadeus, we are working for Amadeus for developers. Our mission is to connect the innovation ecosystem to the travel industry. To make it simple, we are creating REST JSON API for anyone that would like to uh, propose a new and better travel experience. This little story was the starting point of our collaboration with Anna. Uh, over the years, we have worked a lot on improving the quality of the deliverable we are giving to our user. And today, we are going to share with you a bit of uh, all, all this work. We are going to learn uh, what is important to pay at, uh, what, is, it is, what is important to make a good API release, why is it important, and how you can make a difference. So my name is Gana Perel. I'm API Product Manager, and I have with me Anat Solaku, who is Developer Advocates. So without further more introduction, uh, let's go on what we can call the basic of an API release. And when we talk about API, the very first thing that comes to mind is API documentation. API documentation is really important to pay attention to because this is the first thing that your user uh, will see. And as we said, first impression matter. So here I'm gonna give you a few tips to really make uh, your documentation slightly better. And the very first one is quite obvious, but quite often missed as well, is use the same tool as your uh, user to check your documentation before releasing it. Now, more and more, the tool we use to design the API is, the, is completely different from the one that the user is uh, using to read it. And it can lead to little small issue with the markdown or even the model declaration. And that gives a really bad first impression. The second tip is to use uh, tags. Tags allow you to regroup several operations that are working together or working on the same resource to help the user know how each uh, endpoint can work together and how they can use. You can use the tags to create actually um, a small uh, step by step guide that will make it easy for your user to discover and learn your API. The last big tip I have for you on the documentation is to add working examples. From OpenAPI version 3, you can add several examples for uh, your queries and your reply. Please abuse this feature. Examples are really, really helpful to help uh, developers do the first API call really fast. Developers love to shoot the API before even reading the documentation. Uh, this is also very helpful to illustrate everything that your API can do, especially if they are a lot complex. And all these examples, they can be used uh, as mockup to create a mockup server during the development phase of the application. Now, uh, considering that you may want to not release only one API, but quite often a suite of API or even several products, I have kind of one additional and bonus tip for you, which is try to be consistent. 
as much as possible, um, your goal should be to create a familiar environment. So that the time that one user has invested to learn about your API, is, it can actually benefit to learn and use all of your API, all, all, all of your product. Uh, for instance, you can have, uh, you should have a common error handling. You should have common model as much as possible and also common parameter if you can. Um, to illustrate all of that, for instance, on our side in Amadeus, we have a global governance at company level that is deciding how the global processes for API are handled, like the error handling. They are, they are defining also all the uh, model for every resources of the company and all the parameters. Then each team is free to build the API as on the way they want, based on their customer and their product, but with this model. So whenever you're starting inside Amadeus, you can move without feeling lost. And actually you can even progress quite fast by learning different, and learning different products. Now that we have seen the documentation, uh, another big pillar of releasing an API is of course the commercials. And there, uh, I won't talk about private API because pri with private API, you're negotiating everything directly with your customer. I will really be focused on uh, public API. And in, the, and in this case, your goal is to create an offer that is attractive enough to get as many people as possible uh, that want to come, discover, try your product. Because this is how you will bring the solution to your user and also convert them into a pro or enterprise user. But the challenge is also that in the end, you don't want to have too many users that are not, um, too many users that can impact your production environment, your production capability, and even worse, potentially impact the user experience and uh, the performance of your top uh, enterprise user. And also for that, today I have a few tips to give you. Uh, the first one is to take time to choose a name for your API. Most people, uh, they will use uh, a name that make it clear what the API does. But I would recommend you also to think about what your customer are looking for and uh, how they will use the data. To illustrate a bit all of that, a few years back when COVID uh, raised, there was plenty of COVID API. With a name like that, it's kind of obvious that you can find some COVID information inside it. And as people from the travel industry, at some point, we also had to get our own COVID API because travel agent and traveler were really concerned by uh, the evolution of COVID. And so we did. Now, can you imagine what would have happened if uh, we have chosen to name our API COVID API? Well, first, anyone that would have looked at it in Google would have been flooded by all the, uh, COVID, the, the, the news websites that were talking about COVID at that time. Then our API would have been completely lost among the rest of the other COVID API. In the end, what we choose to do is focus on what our uh, users were looking for. And at that time, their main occupation were to know if this destination was safe or if there was any restriction they had to uh, check or do before traveling. And we name our API, our API travel restriction. While it is a lot less obvious that he's talking about COVID, at that time, that was exactly what our users were looking for. And instead of attracting everybody, we have attracted exactly the user where our product will bring the best solution and the one that were the more likely to work with us and continue on the long term. Uh, my second tip is, when you are creating uh, all your offers, and especially the starting one, uh, if you're hesitating between uh, two options, uh, you can, my advice is to always uh, pick the one that is the less, the, the, yeah, the less good for your user. And yeah, I know it can sound weird, but again, let's take an example. Let's say that you're hesitating between two prices to define your starting offer. If you take the lowest one, for sure, your customer are happy. But then if after a few uh, months, you realize that you have misevaluated your running cost, then now you need to increase the price. You're ended up with an happy customer and a really bad communication. Now, if you take it the other way around, taking the, the highest price from the beginning, 
then it gives you time and flexibility to really review, adapt, and customize your offer based on uh, what you are doing and how your users are using it. And in the end, provide a better experience. And then let's move to the last part of making a release. Now that we have a documentation and commercials, we just missed to send the API live. And for that, I don't have much actually to say. Because today we have plenty of API gateway that are really, really uh, good and that are really easy to use. Um, on that part, I have still one tip to mention that quite often when we talk about releasing an API in production, we talk, yeah, exactly, we talk about production environments. But you may also want to consider to not just open the production, but really, but also a kind of a pre production or test customer facing production. The goal here would be to have an easy environment, easy to maintain, easy to access, but completely disconnected from your production so that user can come discover without impacting your real production capability and your real production user. It's kind of creating a discovery offer on top of your starting offer. This is something that we have done inside Amadeus. Every time that you're coming to our uh, portal and you want to create an account, we'll be able to test all our API for free. But in this environment, all the data are past dated, fake, or, uh, or fixed. But it's still quite enough to create your own API, build your product, test it. And only when you're sure that the solution fits you, then you can move in production, start to pay, and really benefit from the live data. So we saw all the basic of an API, uh, the documentation, the pricing, and the connectivity. We saw a few tips to make it better. Now, can you think, do you think that we can do even better than that? Anna, can you do better? We can definitely do better. So until this point, Gail explained to you how you can release your API and the best practices. However, how will developers find out about the new API that you just released? So the first thing that I would like to talk to you about today is the communication. You have to consider at the beginning different places that you can communicate about your new API. And the most straightforward one is your developer portal. This is the entry point that developers can discover your APIs. So if you have the chance to write some blog articles explaining about the new API, of course, keeping your change log up to date, and maybe add also some banners and announcements in your portal, developers will be able to find out about your release. Also, you can send some newsletters to developers who are registered to that, so they can receive directly this information in their mailbox. Another way, of course, is by putting some posts on your different social media, such as Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Another thing is also something that we do at Amadeus for Developers is today we have a developer community on Discord. So every time we have a new release, we make sure that we communicate that directly to the community. And finally, if you're attending some events, why not do some communication around that? For example, if you're in a conference and you have a booth, maybe you can talk with the people who pass by about your new API. Or if you organize a hackathon, you can build a challenge that developers will have the opportunity to use this API for their solutions. And something that I would like also to highlight here is that regarding developer communities at events, there are two ways that you can get very quick feedback on your new API. And now let's see some best practices. First, you need to think about your target audience. Is your target audience be going to be the developer, or maybe you might be in an event or a place that you might talk with more business oriented people. So before doing some communication, think a lot about who is your target audience in order to make it more effective. And the time of the year, of course, is important. For example, if you send a newsletter, maybe during Christmas, it's probable that developers won't pay too much attention to their mailbox as other time, time of the year. So it's okay if you wait a bit before doing your communication, if you release this API a bit before Christmas, for example. And it's crucial to do a planning. 
if you are not doing a proper planning for, for the communication, most probably you're going to miss on that. You're going to be busy with a lot of things and your colleagues as well. So you might at the end not do any communication or maybe not the proper one. And if you, if you think that this is too complicated and you don't know about marketing, don't worry about it. I'm a developer. Personally, I don't know much about marketing. That's why I ensure to work closely with the marketing colleagues in Amadeus. And finally, make sure that you're consistent. If you're consistent, all the planning that you do in the communication will be much smoother than if you don't have consistency. And also, you will be able to collaborate with your marketing team in a nice way. So now that we saw that there are different ways for developers to find out about your new API, the next thing we want to talk about is how developers will know about what they can do with the API that you just released. So let's talk now about the developer guides. Gail mentioned important before how important it is to give a good name to your API so developers can identify what they can do. But we can even go further. For example, when we focus on technical developer guides, it's important to build some use cases, some tutorials, sorry, based on use cases, because this is much more meaningful for a user. For example, if you build a tutorial about how you can be, how you can build a flight booking application, or how you can make a payment, or how you can do this, how you can do that, the users who read these tutorials, they know what to expect. So through these tutorials, later on inside them, they can discover which APIs they have to use. But it's much simpler for them to organize everything in a structured way based on use cases. And also to keep in mind the proficiency levels of developers. You might have some developers who are junior, some other developers who are more senior. That's why make sure that you cover all these levels with your tutorials. And every time that you publish a, a developer guide, don't just publish and forget about it. Be open to feedback, to questions of the user. So make sure that you're always going back to your tutorial and you keep it up to date. And finally, a tip that I would like to mention here is to make your developer guides open source. If you have them open source, not only you will be able to work in an easy way with your team, but also on the other hand, you will be able to receive some contributions, questions and direct feedback there from your customers. And apart from the technical developer guides, you can also build some educational content that is more relevant to your industry. This can be very useful for companies that are new in your own industry. For example, if there is someone who wants to build something around travel and they don't have knowledge, we've noticed how much helpful it is to give some industry knowledge to them. This not only makes them able to come up with more ideas, more use cases, and bring innovation, but they can definitely build better services for their end customers. And finally, if your customers are educated in your industry, you will also be able to have a better communication with them because you're going to share a common language. So now we saw that thanks to the developer guides, both that can be technical or industry specific, developers will know what they can build and how with your API. And now how can we ensure that developers can make easily their first API call? And at this point, I would like to talk about developer tools with main focus on the SDKs. With SDKs, you're able to give to developers access to all the APIs that your company has and the new one, of course, that you release when you update your SDK. And you can also make the authorization process very simple. For example, at Amadeus for Developers, to get your access token is pretty straightforward if you follow the authorization guide. However, this access token expires every 30 minutes, which means that the developers in their own application, in their own programming language, they will have to write some logic in order to handle the generation of the token. But at the SDK, we do it by ourselves, so developers don't really need to care about these low-level details. And also with SDKs, you can provide some error handling to make debugging easier for the users. And finally, some code examples that they can copy and paste directly in their application. And some best practices here that I would like to share with you is, again, same as developer guides, make your SDKs open source. 
With open source SDKs, you're going to build a developer community around your tools. And also this is going to build trust between you and, and your customer. And then you have to make a decision about the technology, which is something very crucial. I know you might want to use different technologies to help developers integrate the APIs in their own environment. However, you might want to focus on a few of them. And for that, you can do some market analysis to see what developers what are using, what are the, the top trends when it comes to programming languages. And also you can do some analysis of the headers that you get in your logs to see your own customers, what programming languages are using. And also you have to be very careful around that because you need to keep in mind that every time you release a new API, you also have to update the SDK across all the programming languages. You, so you have to think a lot about your resources of your team, the knowledge and the scalability. That's why it's better to focus on a few languages and technologies instead of supporting many, many languages. And finally, make sure that you have good quality SDK so that your SDK is well documented and well tested. So now that we saw how developers can find out about your, their new, your new API, how they can know what they can do, and also how they can make, thanks to the SDKs, their first API call in their own programming language. Gail, do you think we can do even better than that? So thanks to everything that we have shown until now, we have tremendously reduced the time for the first API call, and we have also dramatically increased the learning curve of our user. So from now, you will probably have many more questions about the complex use cases of your API and corner cases. And one way to go beyond is to continue to make it easier for him, easier to understand your API, easier to understand how we can use it to the deepest. And for that, you can, for instance, create video tutorial uh, for specific use cases or even articles, but much more deeper to explain how the various parameters are working together, uh, some that are uh, not working together. Another way to make it easier is by also explaining how uh, the user can integrate this API in his application. And for that, Anna, maybe you have something to tell us. Mm -hmm. Yes, so regarding that, you can make some widgets or some plugins to help developers integrate without having to write any code or maybe with just a limited amount of code, uh, some functionalities. And this can be very useful if there is a startup that maybe they want to release the MVP or maybe they don't have enough coding knowledge at that moment. So by creating some widgets or some plugins, you can make it much easier for developers. And as a key here, I would say it's very important to make them in a way that developers can customize them. So I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to widgets and plugins. Another way to go beyond is by inspiring the developers. Uh, in the end, they came to see your API because you have advertised one basic use case that were kind of fitting uh, the idea they have. But quite often, your resources are much more richer than what you have advertised. And one way, for instance, to inspire them is by creating visualization of your resource. Here, in this case, using Postman, so that in one shot, your user can see everything that your API is doing. And maybe it will uh, enable him to create better use cases or even to go beyond his own uh, reflection. Another way to inspire him could be by uh, showing him how this API or your new API is, integrating, uh, is integrated with the rest of your ecosystem with all your API, but also outside. How can you build something even bigger? Anna, can you tell us? Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, as Gail said, you can build something that combines uh, many of your APIs or third-party APIs as well. And this reflects the reality, because if you think of a real application, developers are going to use maybe not only your APIs, but also different providers and different types of APIs depending on their use case. That's why you can do the following. You can build some small web or mobile applications to inspire developers of what they can do. And as a, an advice here, I would like to say, make these prototypes, these small applications open source. So developers are not only going to be inspired, but also they might be able to build their own solutions on top of that without having to start from scratch. Thank you, Anna. 
So to wrap it up, uh, we saw that uh, to, to improve, to make a really a, a better API release, there is already plenty of things to do on, on the basic part, this is documentation and, and, and things like that. And if you can invest a bit more time, uh, it's really important to create guides and tools for the developer to facilitate uh, the learning curve and reduce the time for the first API call. And only really when you can invest a lot of time, then you can help them to go beyond by inspiring them, giving them the key to continue to have a smooth and easy experience and, and create things that are much bigger than what they came from. And finally, we would like to invite you all to review your API release processes in order to identify areas of improvement. And don't be afraid to make mistakes uh, and in general to get out of your comfort zone because at the end of the day, that's the way that we can get better. Thank you very much. Thank you.